welcome back to part three of reading Hearthstone, not Hearthstone cards. Fuck, I've been doing this for too long. Welcome back to part three of reading artifact cards and talking shit about them. I think we already talked shit about Magnus. Mana Drain, this card is so good. Who the fuck is Massel? Six attack, three armor, six health. That's good. Holy shit, free armor to start out with. I don't know. I, I That's a lot of armor. I don't know if you need that much, but it's a lot. Um, and then your improvement. Your tower has plus one armor. Huh. Now that is interesting. Um, hmm. Don't think this is actually good. Don't expect this card to be good. So, important thing to keep in mind about any competitive game. Any game. Any game where you're trying to optimize things. Um, optimization doesn't always mean, or like doesn't mean having the most possible. Right? Like that is not optimization. Optimization is actually the exact opposite of having the most possible. Instead, optimization is about having the least necessary. Right? You want to minimize how much you have of something, but make sure that it's still just enough. To me, from what I have seen, the optimal amount of armor is 2, because you don't take creep damage, right? Regular land creeps will not be able to damage you if you have 2 armor. That is really good. Anything more than that makes it a bit tricky, because there's just not quite enough, um, you know, like, I mean, yes, it's, it's nice that you have it against, like, enemy heroes and such, um, but, but the value drops off. The value becomes worse. So, that leaves us with this dude. Um, free armor is just not that sweet spot, right? The card, the, the steel reinforcement thing, uh, seems like a super good counter to like creep heavy decks. So it might be used as like a counter card for those creep heavy decks. But outside of that, I don't think it's really that good. Um, especially you always have to keep in mind the big boy. Right, like the big boy exists, he's got the god tier stats, and yeah. Free armor is nice though, like it's just, that's just a lot of armor. You know, like it might actually be enough. Like, <laughs> as another principle, and this is more of a balance principle that I like to bring up a lot. But sometimes it doesn't matter if it's optimized or not. The only thing that matters is how fucking high the numbers are. Right, like you can't make things viable by just making the numbers high enough. I don't know if free armor is high enough. But um, it is a lot of armor. Okay, Meepo. We talked about Meepo. Melee Dire Creep. Radiant Dire Creep. Mercenary Exiles. Two attack, one armor, four health. Three mana. Active. Spend all your gold. Modify Mercenary Exiles with plus, uh, plus X attack and plus X health. The X is half the gold spent. This card is garbage gargled garbage gurgling garbage messenger rookie rooker rookery um choose an ally choose a combat target for it it's an improvement oh you know what i'm really starting to like this um i'm really starting to like the whole fifth uh like a uh, blue blue red deck Blue and red? You know, like, this is a really good improvement to have of a red deck. Um, Not good in a blue deck. Not good in a blue deck. Again, I, I really think, like, blue might end up working out as a really good supporting color. Uh, Mr. Ferronus, modify allies with plus one attack before the action phase improvement. Uh, this actually seems really solid. Especially good with all of the Satyrs and all of that shit that's got zero attack, right? Now you just constantly buff shit, give them more power. Um... Seems good. I like it. Um, also, gotta keep in mind green and and red, right? Like, you have the tight hunter, you put down Mr. Favorilus, it constantly buffs shit. Tight hunter now starts getting some attack damage, right? So, yeah. But I'm really liking the idea of like a tight hunter specific deck. Like, the, the tight hunter seems super strong. Murder plot. Give a black hero plus eight attack this round. Choose a combat target for it. Um, yeah, that's that's solid. That's good. Um, seems fine. I wonder if you're able to have two colors, or could you run one blue, one black? Or if you're only able to have two colors, or could you run one blue, one red, one black, one green hero? I'm pretty sure you can run all of them. 
Man, compare this to Double Edge. Uh, yes, this is, again, it's just like Double Edge, just much better. Um, anyway, Mystic Flare. Divide 12 damage evenly, divided among a unit and its allied neighbors. Um, <laughs> depends. So, uh, got Sky of Mage. Free attack, 6 health. Give a hero and its allied neighbors minus 2 armor this round. Yeah, I'm not digging Sky of Mage. His stats are garbage. His ability is fine. Um, but Mystic Flare just doesn't really do enough damage. I mean, I mean, you can kill. You can kill free creeps with it, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, um, this seems not good. And Skorky, as Skorky's pointing out, doesn't even really seem like Sky with Mage, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think this is good. It's six mana as well, you know. Like, if it was at least less mana than that. Never ward, premier card of fuck now. After opponent plays a spell, it's an improvement. Deal free damage to the enemy tower. Um. This is actually not that bad, in my opinion. Condemn a random enemy improvement. Huh. Six attack, nine health. This good... Th wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Why is Pugna a red hero? He's clearly green! What is this shit? <laughs> what? How is Pugna a red hero? <laughs> Come on, guys! This was the easiest choice of color! Oh, man. Come on! It even looks so dumb! Like, they may try to make him look in the artwork. Look at that! But he's just still green! Because this is a green boy! Why did you not make him a green card? God. Okay, um... So Never Ward is terrible in red. Um, Condemn a random enemy improvement is very good, I think. He's got the 69 stats, so that's fine. <clears throat> Pagna is well known for his high HP pool as well. Yeah, definitely. Pagna is definitely known for having the most HP, right? Like, so much HP. And he's also known for not having an ability that does a lot of damage. I mean, that definitely nailed it right there. I mean, this 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 card just makes me think, Pagna, right? Like, if you think about if you think about the categories of heroes, right? If I think, you know, like like here's here's a, here's a lineup that pops to my mind very frequently. You know, a big giant ogre, Bristleback, Centaur War Runner, Axe, Pagna. I mean, it just sounds right. So, seems good. Yeah, um, I mean, honestly, as, as, uh, as a black card or a green card, like I thought it was going to be, I thought it might have been all right, but as a red card, I, I don't, I'm not sure. The active ability is good. The rest of him, like the Never Ward is just not that useful. All right, uh, new orders. Choose an ally. Choose a combat target for it. I feel like I've seen this card before. Have we seen this card before? I don't know. Oh, it's good. Very clearly. These these kind of effects are always good, but especially in red. Um, deal two damage to a unit for free mana. Are you fucking shitting me? <clears throat> 7 attack, 5 health. Right at the cutting deals plus 2 damage when attacking a hero or tower. Is this a joke? This card is a joke, right? I mean, I guess... It was a black improvement. This is not a black improvement. Oh, you mean the the getting uh like choosing a target? Yeah, yeah. I did different cards so that you choose targets. Um Yeah, I mean this card is is so terrible. Okay, anyway. Uh Nick Sh Nick Tasha's. Who the fuck is Nick Tasha? Just call him like a real name, seriously. 
Nuktasha. <laughs> Sounds like some fucking white girl in Seattle whose parents were like, well, we don't want her to be called Natasha. She's gonna be Nuktasha. Come on. All right. 25 gold. Move equipped heroes, enemy neighbors to random other lanes. Equipped heroes plus one armor. Hmm. I find this one hard to judge. I think this card could actually be insane. It's priced at 25 gold as well. This one is very hard to judge for me. I would not be surprised if this card is actually just amazing. Condemn an improvement for 10 gold. Um, probably will see play. There has, like the thing is like, there's just not a lot of cards that I've seen so far that actually deal with improvements or do anything to improvements. And um, <clears throat> the fact that it does makes it good. It costs a lot of money. Um, maybe it's a bit overpriced, but I feel like decks that have no other way of dealing with improvements will probably be forced to run this just so you have a way of dealing with it. Uh, Ogladi Vandal. Play effect. You 4 damage to the enemy tower. Yeah, this card is terrible. A 4. 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, no. Ogre Conscript. Six mana, seven attack, two armor, seven health creep. Um, yeah, this guy is just big, right? Like, this guy is just really big. <laughs> I feel like you'll probably see him just because he's so big. <clears throat> Ogred Corpse Tosser. Five mana, two attack, zero armor, ten health. Deals two piercing damage to the enemy tower after an allied mana creep, die, creep dies. So... Remember that, like, deck that I talked about that summons all of the creeps? That's how you do damage with it. Not sure that that's necessarily the way you want to do damage with it, but this is a way you can do damage with it. Um, it's honestly probably not a good card. Ogre Muggy. Free attack and 7 health. Zero armor. Meep, meep. How does Thanks, Ogre Magi have zero Stanley armor? For strong milky bones for our sexy boy, Pugna. <laughs> hey, thank you, dude. Um, how, how does Ogre Magi have zero armor, free attack, and seven health? Like, if this was accurate, this guy should have six or so attack, four armor, and 700 health. And his passive should, like, his ability should be regeneration. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Why is he blue? How is Ogre Magi a blue hero? I mean, I get that he's visually blue, but clearly you don't care about that. Pagna was a red hero. <laughs> I don't need to hear that shit right now, okay? How is Ogre Magi... Well, does Ogre Magi have less attack and HP than fucking Pagna? Oh, God, I don't get it. It seems like the people that made this game have never played Dota before. This is not according to my lore, man! What's the point of this all if it's not following the lore? After you play a spell, blue spell, there's a 25% chance to put a base copy of that card into your hand. And we don't know the premiere card yet. Um, deal one piercing. Okay, well, I know what this is. How have you not got, how, how have you guys not figured out what this card is? Card type improvement, right? It's an improvement, a free mana blue improvement. Deal one piercing damage to each enemy. Except it's not centered, so there's something missing here. Well, you just got to figure out what is missing. There's only space for one lane here. To each enemy in all lanes, to each enemy creep, something else. Like, there's only this very limited phrasing that can actually fit in here. Come on, guys. 
do a little bit of journalism here. All right, we talked about Omni Knight again already. Outward Devourer, four attack and six health, Essence Aura. Reactive ability. After you play a blue card, there's a 50% chance to, to restore two mana. So why in the hell would I play this over Crystal Main? This is literally Crystal Main's effect just worse. What? I mean, that Astral Imprisonment better be really good. Each enemy neighbor? Yeah, that could probably be it. Um. <clears throat> yeah, this this is just a significantly worse crystal main. Okay, actually, no, never mind. Crystal main says spell, right? After you play a spell, this says after you play a blue card. So you can also play a minion or creep, I guess. It's still worse because crystal main wasn't even limited to blue spell. Uh, blue spells. Crystal, uh, Crystal Main was just limited to spells. Yeah, th uh, this this guy. I mean, like he might have a really good premier card. I wonder if we have any info on that. Stun a unit, four mana. Stun a unit. That unit damages nearby enemies. I assume something like that. So stun a unit is pretty good. Stunning unit is pretty good. Oh, well. Path of the Cunning. After you play a black card, modify a random ally with plus one siege. Hmm. Some improvement. So here's the problem with this card. If you don't get it on turn one, it's terrible. Like, this card is good on turn one. It's a good card on turn one. You play this right away. It's good. Um, you know, it's especially since you modify a random ally. Like, you can modify a hero. I think I think on turn one, this card is really good. Uh, so it comes down to how old in your deck is. Right? Like, and it comes down to, I guess, how big your balls are. Like, are you willing to take the risk to say, I want to try and just draw this on turn one if you draw this on turn one it's good if you don't draw it on turn one it's terrible and uh, i do want to make clear it needs to be turn one if you draw this and if you play this on turn two it's, it's not good then it's pretty mediocre turn three turn four it's garbage but turn one it's good hmm OD plus CM for 50% to gain mana since you can use a blue spell that costs less than two infinite infinity if you have <laughs> Oh good so <laughs> Alright payday Double your gold Um yeah I mean this will see play So quick rule in terms of card games Whenever something says double Somebody will try to build a deck around it It's just that simple Whenever something says double Somebody will try to build a deck around it. And frankly, they probably should. So... Yeah, this seems pretty solid. Phantom Assassin. Yeah, we talked about her already, I think. Face Boots. Uh, swap equipped hero with another ally. Yeah, plus four health, six gold. For six gold, uh, I'm, I'm fine. That seems fair. <laughs> blessed champion. Hey, 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 hey! Are you trying to tell me that Leroy Blessed Champions de Blessed Champion decks didn't exist? I mean, I know it was a long time ago, but that shit existed too. All right? Like, that was a thing. Just saying. Um, but yeah. Pick a fight. Choose an allied hero. It taunts. Choose a combat target for it. This seems reasonable. Not as good as the other one. Not as good as the one mana version where you just choose a combat target. Deal four damage to a unit in any lane. Actually, you know what? I think this might be useful in a deck where you... Like, again, uh, this might be really good in that blue-red deck I keep talking about. Like, honestly, I think blue-red just seems like a really good combo. 
All right, pick off. Deal four damage to a unit in any lane. Um, yes, very good. Plate mail. Equipped heroes plus four armor. That's a lot of armor. Um, it's late game, so that seems a bit more useful in the late game. You know, I said how that one hero has with, with free armor, it's a little bit too much. Well, late game, since this is more of a late game card, uh, always keep in mind, you play heroes right away, right? So um, this is more of a late game card. Four armor in a late game seems a lot more reasonable. Four armor is a lot of armor, um, so it seems pretty solid. Pushing Knife. Equipped hero has plus two attack. Gets five gold after an enemy hero dies. Gets one gold after an enemy creep dies. I assume you don't have to actually get the kill with the hero. Eight gold. Um, so you have to get three kills before it pays off. Oh, well, no. Uh, three creep kills and one hero kill, right? Like one hero and then three creeps. Yes. Eight gold and then it pays off. Or two hero kills, then it starts paying off. It's probably too slow. Give a red hero plus four attack this round. Yeah, this is just kind of better than double edge already, isn't it? Like, isn't four attack on a red hero usually enough? I don't know. It seems fine. Probably not good. But it's global. Are you sure it's global? It doesn't say in any lane. The artifact Twitter was pretty clear about the fact that unless it says it's in any lane, it is not in any lane. If it if that is global, then it is very good. Portion of knowledge, draw a card. I actually think this this is pretty solid. Prelex, uh, yep, we have talked about you. Prey on the weak. Yes, we have talked about you. Primal roar. Yes, we have talked about you. Prowl of Vanguard, yes, we have talked about you. Ravenhook, placeholder, free attack, six health, repossess. It's a creep. We do zero mana. Probably has more than zero mana cost. Condemn a random item equipped by the unit blocking Ravenhook. Get gold equal to the base cost of that item. Um, I don't know. Uh, ravenous mass, four mana, active. What the fuck is going on in that artwork? Active ability. Um, condemn Ravenous Masters, allied neighbors. Modify Ravenous Masters to attack and health. And it's got one attack and one health. Yeah, this is bad. Going wide in artifact is actually really important. Because else people will just shoot past you, right? The fact that you can reactivate this every turn... You know, I'm kind of thinking it might fit into that creep deck, but it's black. You don't really have a black color there. Mm. Yeah, I don't really like it very much. Rebel Decoy. Active. Swap Rebel Decoy with another ally. <laughs> so you can feed this nerd. <laughs> um... I don't know. It seems fine. Not great, but fine. Red Mist Moor Cartext. Equipped here as plus two attack and five siege for ten gold. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I just think the sieging thing is just not that strong. Red Mist Pillager. This card is garbage. After common phase, a Red Mist Pillager, Pillager dealt them battle damage to a tower this round, summon a Red Mist Pillager. So I know Sir Action Stack said this card is good. Um, It's not. <laughs> sorry slacks I'm, I, sorry I mean it's with no disrespect but this card is just terrible um relentless pursuit can't you condemn a hero and then use the escape route no after heroes condemned they're dead choose a unit in another lane move a random allied black hero from this lane to that lane deal two damage to the chosen unit so the fact that this is random makes me unhappy about it. So this is weird. This card has a lot of effects that are all individually powerful. It's got a lot of effects that are all individually powerful. I think it's just got a few too many of them. Right? Like the thing is that like with 
too many of them, you eventually stop being able to control them. It might be good. I'm actually quite unsure. Relentless Zombie. A uh, play effect. Give Relentless Zombie a death shield. Death shield is divine shield. If you die, if you really to die, you instead drop to 1 HP. It's a better gank. No, with gank you can control. You can control who you're sending there. Right? With this, you can't. Play effect. Give Relentless Zombie a death shield. Yeah, um... It stalls. It kills a creep. I mean, you don't really want to play a card to kill one creep. Uh, remote detonation. Deal 5 damage to all enemy units that are unblocked. 6 mana. I mean, on 6 mana, for blue, you can't just kill a lane. Right? On 6 mana, you can actually usually just kill a lane. So is this better than just killing a lane? It's probably not better than just killing a lane, is it? So assuming you only have like one blue, like one unit in the lane, it's like one blue hero enemy has a lot of stuff, then this card is really good, but it's just quite situational. This is actually something I find also hard to call. So I, I would guess this card is actually pretty bad. But if the situation in which this card is good happens often, this card will be good. And I know that sounds really obvious, but I just can't really tell at this stage whether or not this card will see a lot of play because I don't know whether or not that kind of situation will occur frequently. Revital Convoy. Revital Convoy. That's the one. Has plus X attack where X is equal to half your gold. Zero attack, zero armor, and 20 health. That's a lot of health. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's a solid card. I don't know, actually, is it? Blue, black. No, not blue, black. Green, black. Generate a lot of money. Use Raftal Conway to like push a lot of damage. Um, it seems fine. The fact is, this is a 20 health minion. <laughs> like, oh, creep. I'm sorry. I keep using the wrong terms. Um, it's a 20 health creep. So because it's a 20 health creep... That makes me think it's it's already got something going for it. Most of the time, this thing will have probably free attack. So if we think about it that way, if it was a free attack 20 health creep, would we play that? Push one if you think we would, push two if you think we wouldn't. It's just a lot of stats. And I think it might actually not be that terrible. Oh, there's... Uh, yep, look at that. It's black. So it's like, again, it's about the, the black and blue, uh, black and green combo. Reftal Investments. Add a charge to Reftal Investments after combat phase. Active. Get, one, get four gold for each charge. Condemn Reftal Investments. Free mana. Improvement. Hmm, interesting. So you want to play it and then just kind of like have it sit there until eventually you get the money out of it. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Um, so the Reftal Convoy or Convoy of the Reftal Investment, the, the payday, you just go hard on the money. That actually seems pretty reasonable. Riley, yes, you are just sad. Just really sad. It, it, this is sad. Rising Anger. Modify Red Hero with. After you play a non... Oh, we already talked about this. Ristol Emblem. Equipped hero has plus 4 health and minus 2 armor. The unit blocking equipped hero has minus 2 armor. Yeah, I don't think this is good. Rix. Rapid Deployment. Um, So Rix is probably good. 
So rapid deployment, in case you don't know what it does. Uh, so this is free mana, seven health. If he gets killed, you immediately get him back. Truth to power, five mana, silence a unit this round. So this is terrible for five mana. Um, yeah, rapid deployment is just really good. I don't know what else there is to say. I mean, rapid deployment is just one of those effects that's really powerful. Like, you want to slap all of your items and, like, modifications and shit on this dude because he's always coming back every single turn. Um, so I imagine that Riggs will actually see some play. Uh, probably a lot of play, actually. Remusk, uh, it's an item. Healer unit 4, equipped heroes, plus 1 armor, 9 cost. No, oh, seems fine. Say to duelist. Modify say to duelist with plus two attack after the combat phase. Free attack. Zero armor, five health. Four mana. Yeah, probably not, right? Bit slow. Say to your magician. Uh, active. Fully restore your tower's mana. So this guy needs to survive a round, but then he's good. That's actually really good. Holy shit, man. That's a powerful effect. That is a really powerful effect. I mean, like, this this card might actually be, like, super, super good. So that means Faber, your tower has plus two mana. Cool. Buff a tower, give it more mana. Ramp it up. Let's go. Fully heal Selfish Cleric after combat phase. Four attack, four health, four mana. Probably doesn't have enough health, but might be fine. Um, equipped hero has plus two armor. Equipped heroes, allied neighbors have plus one armor. Yeah, maybe. Shiva's guard, 16 gold. Modify a unit and its allied neighbors with minus two attack. Equipped hero has plus two armor. This is a good effect. This is a good effect. Put it on a tight hunter. Blast everybody's HP away. I like it. Yeah, this is good. Bit expensive, but if you can't make it work, it'll be very powerful. Shop deed. Each item in your secret shop costs X less gold, where X is equal to its base cost. Eh? Doesn't that just make them free? What? Why wouldn't you just say it makes them free? Why would you write this so complicated? Wait, am I misunderstanding this? Because this is written so weirdly. But doesn't this just make them free? Are the items that have base cost, base gold plus X gold in price? I I don't think so. I guess if there are cards that mess with the cost. Okay, it's a very convoluted way to write items off free. Um, this seems super scary. Holy shit! I mean, this seems absurd. I mean, it's, it seems absolutely nutty. Absolutely nutty. Short sword. Equipped hero has plus two attack. Um, Sister of the Whale. Choose uh, active. Choose a common target for Sister of the Whale. Five mana, four, five. You know what? I'm actually digging this one. This one might actually be kind of fine. Uh, it's probably a little bit too weak on the stats, though. Skyrift Mage. Uh, yeah, we talked about that. Slay. Condemn a creep. Honestly, this might actually be a pretty solid card. I think you want to play that in the red deck. Why not? Just kills a creep. Seems good. <clears throat> Smeevil Arms Master. Modify random allied hero of plus two attack. Play effect. Four mana, two, two. Buff me that tight hunter. Buff me that tight hunter, my boys. Smeevo Blacksmith. Play effect. Modify random allied hero of plus one armor. Buff me that tight on the. Okay. So I can spring the trap. Summon two centaur hunters into any lane. Seven mana. What are centaur hunters? Five mana, four eight. 
But this is actually pretty strong, man. That's, that's a lot of stats. Into any lane at that. Steam Cannon. Deal 4 piercing damage to a unit in any lane. This card is good, but it costs 7 mana, which makes it a little bit worse. But it is still really good. Steel Reinforcements. Oh, yeah, we looked at that already. I mean, we're almost done. I'm just kind of rushing through the end here, but like we have looked at most of this already. Equipped Hero has plus 4 health. Modify Stonehold Clock if Equipped Hero has plus 12 after the combat phase. Yeah, this card is good. This card is really good. Five gold for that. That's absurd. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. The phrasing on this is weird. The way I understood this is that the health keeps going up. First round, it's plus four health. Then it's plus six. Then it's plus eight. Then it's plus ten. Then it's plus twelve. And so on. Or does this mean first it's plus four? And then for any any following round, it's plus two, right? So you actually lose two health. Do, do we have any confirmation on this? I mean, it's really cheap. So if it loses two HP, then I don't think it's terrible. But if it, if it gains two HP, it's super good. I mean, the phrasing on this is garbage. I, I, I don't think we really can tell what it's about. Stonehold Pike. Equipped hero has plus two attack. And then equipped, uh, modify Stonehold Pike if equipped hero has plus one attack after the combat phase. Six gold. No. No, no, no. This one keeps getting more powerful, though. Because, like, for six gold, plus two attack is terrible. And plus one attack for six gold is pathetic. So it needs to go, keep going up in armor, uh, in, in damage, right? It needs to keep increasing in damage. So since this one increases in damage, I assume the Stonehold Cloak also increases in damage. Well, in that case, the Stonehold Cloak is really good. I'm not quite sure about the pike. I don't think this is very good. I also don't think this is a pike that's on the iron. No, if I look Google pike, then I get a fish. Yes. Here's what a pike actually looks like. This is a pike. And I don't know what the fuck this is, but this is not a pike. Right? Like, this is a pike. What the fuck is this? Anyway. <clears throat> Stonehold Plate. Equipped hero has plus one armor. Modify Stonehold Plate with equipped hero has plus one armor after the combat phase. Yeah, so these keep growing. I mean, this effect is also really good. I think the weakest one is probably the, the, the pike. The Stonehold Plate and Stonehold Cloak seem really good. Storm Spirit. Black. Four attacks, six health. Storm Spirit gives Storm Spirit plus two attack until the end of its next combat phase after you play a black card in any lane. Oh, that's good. Can you activate this multiple times? We also don't know what ball lightning is. Uh, deal two damage to one. Uh, deal two damage to each enemy creep for straving run. Uh, this is good. Sucker punch. Stun a blocking uh, and stun a unit blocking an allied hero. Red hero this round. Deal two damage to that unit. This is also good. Sven. Sven has plus X cleave, where X is equal to half its attack. Five attack and eleven health. There's somebody you want to buff. The artwork on this doesn't look very good. The artwork on this makes it look like he's got a very tiny arm and a very tiny head. I mean, this is a... This is bad artwork. Holy shit. <laughs> he looks so terrible. <clears throat> All right, the Oath. You cannot play spells or creeps while this is the active lane. Is an improvement. If there is an allied black hero in this lane, allies have plus four attack. I hate this card. I absolutely hate this card. 
Because what this card will do is people will play it on a lane and then you're like, well, this lane is dead. This is a stupid card. This will lead to cancer decks. Thunder God's Wrath, Premier Card of Zeus. Okay, free attack, seven health. Deal one piercing damage to Zeus, enemy neighbors. After you play a blue spell, that's kind of nice. Um, and then deal four piercing damage to each enemy hero on all lanes. Yeah, I think Zeus is pretty solid. I wouldn't put him in like the top tier of characters, but like he's fine. We talked about Thunder Pack High. There's Timbersaw. Four attack, 11 health. Timbersaw has plus arm one armor for each of its attackers. I really should say plus one armor and plus one regeneration. Come on, guys. Uh, we're missing the premier card, so again, it's hard to tell. Time of Triumph. Modify allied heroes with plus four attack, plus four armor, plus four health, plus four cleave, plus four retaliate, and plus four siege. Um, this is an all-in... Well, this is not an all-in card. This is a win-the-game-now card. Uh, this card is very good. Uh, the only problem with it is it's eight mana, and the question is, do you want to play an eight mana card? Right? Like, the effect is absurdly powerful. It is just stupidly good. Um... The question is just, do you have time to get to 8 mana? Um, if you have time to get to 8 mana, this card will win you the game. Um, and if you don't, then it won't. But that's really what it comes down to. So it comes down to the deck, but in the right deck, this card is your win condition. Um, deal 2 damage to each enemy. Tom Portal Scroll. Return an allied hero to the fountain. Free gold and it's a consumable. So this is the kind of card where you can just pew, bring somebody back and then play them again next round. It's good. Traveler's Cloak, equipped hero has plus four health. That seems fine. Tree and Protector, abilities. Four attack, ten health, abilities. Uh, Tree and Protectors, allied neighbors have plus two armor. We again don't know the premier card. Um, he's another one that you want to kind of like play with other units to kind of like buff everybody up. Like, that seems to be a pretty common strategy, but I think what's going to happen is people will just echo slam it. So the main's favor, plus two mana improvement. If you pull two of those on the start, you can upgrade your first name twice, get a plus four mana on top of the second turn, four mana, and use it on second turn. <laughs> well, that seems unlikely. Trebuchet. Deal two piercing damage to the enemy tile before the action phase. Improvement. This is a waste of a card. Truth to power. Sounds you know this round. Oh, we talked about this already. Tyler Estate Sensor. What? This is a card name? Tyler? Hey, Tyler. How you doing? Uh, two attack, eight health. The enemy tower has minus one mana. This seems actually a pretty solid card. Untested Grunt. Not very good. I also missed a bunch of cards. Um, free mana. Draw a card after combat phase if your tower was dealt damage this round. Um, yes, I think this is actually pretty solid. Improvement, two mana. Deal four piercing damage to the enemy tower. May only be used if there are no unblocked enemies. Yes, that is terrible. There's Ursa. Venomancer. Two mana, two attack, six health. <laughs> God, these stats are better be really good. Summon a Plague Ward into Venomancer's Lane each deployment phase. And Plague Wards are... we don't know. Rentriloquy. Choose a unit. It taunts. Okay. A equipped hero has plus three armor and rapid deployment. Your tower has plus three armor. This card is amazing. Holy shit. Wow. This might be the strongest card that I have seen so far. This might actually be the best card in the entire game. Holy fucking shit, this card is good. There's no nothing about this card that is not amazing. It's not even 25 gold. Wow. Uh, that card is incredible. I mean, put that on put that on the big boy. You put that on the big boy, uh, what, what you gonna do? I mean, I mean that's, that's incredible. What, a, what an amazing card. This card is so good. All right. Death effect. Uh, modify allies with plus one attack and plus one health. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Two attack, two health, two mana. Seems fine. Bit hard to control, but yeah. Nasal Ghoul, okay. Wingfall Hammer. 
19 gold. Give Equipped Hero and its allied neighbors plus X regeneration this round where X is half its attack. Equipped Hero has plus 4 attack. This could actually be pretty reasonable. And then Winter Wyvern. Black. 6 attack. 0 armor. 6 health. Arctic Burn. Active ability. Move Winter Wyvern to an empty combat position and give it plus 4 attack this round. That seems pretty solid. Winter's Curse. Disarm a unit until end of round. That unit's allied neighbors battle it. That seems pretty solid as well. And then we've got a zombie and that's it. So that's the complete set. God, three 45 minute videos, man. That was over two hours. I didn't expect it to take that long, but I wanted to do this a while ago. The cards just keep, they kept, you know, they just added up over time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I think we learned a lot today. I did. I don't know if you did, but I did. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.